So first of all, I would like to thank the SMO GI uh, Congress Committee for uh, inviting me to give this talk. I have to say that I have uh, really enjoyed uh, preparing it. Uh, it's been a good opportunity to put some ideas together and to realize that uh, we have plenty of exciting tools, uh, we as radiologists and oncologists, to use uh, to improve our patient's care. So let's start this amazing uh, trip to the future of imaging in GI. I have no disclosures. And I think that in order to understand the future, it's always a good idea to uh, go back to the origins. And I noticed that this film has uh, made a big impact in our generation. <laughs> so we are in the 17th century. We can uh, imagine what a challenge it will be in order to understand what was happening inside a human body. The only way was actually to open it. It was not only until 1895 when a physicist called Rothen performed the first X-ray. But advances in imaging uh, always go hand-to-hand uh, -hand with advantage in technology. So in the 20th uh, century, we uh, were able to perform a thousand of those simple x-rays in just a few seconds. Since then, many other imaging techniques have been developed. So currently, we are uh, able to give you precise information about the anatomy of, of the tumor. But not only that, we can also give you uh, relevant information about the molecular features of the tumor, for example, with a spectroscopy MRI, about the tumor cellularity with uh, diffusion MRI, and even uh, information about the uh, metabolic uh, features of the tumor with PET. So let's uh, think about the future now. And if we do so, uh, uh, some issues or some um, caveats may arise. For example, some of you may think that uh, all these tools are very nice, but uh, they are very expensive. So how are we going to able to, to afford them? Uh, some of you may think that uh, if we actually are going to be able to measure the changes that uh, these images give us, the information that these give us, other of you may think that this is very cool, but actually what you need are uh, tools that uh, may improve your clinical practice. So you need uh, reliable, predictive, and response biomarkers. And I think that in this field, uh, it's of particular interest what's going to happen with immunotherapies and in the assessment of heterogeneous response. And finally, uh, all these tools are going to give us huge information about uh, the tumor, and we are going to, uh, uh, we will need to deal with all this big data. But where some people see challenges, I see new opportunities. So um, we have worked hard in uh, developing uh, new uh, in, uh, technical um, improvements uh, to reduce uh, the cost of those uh, scans. For example, uh, reducing the time of the scanning, uh, we are now able to perform uh, high-quality ultra-fast MRI uh, images. Or, for example, we can give uh, uh, less volume of, of intravenous contrast, so this necessarily will reduce the cost of the scans. And we are in the area of uh, networking, and as you know, we are able to uh, send huge amount of information, and I would say that uh, I include uh, images. And oh, just a second. Uh, so we can send this information uh, just in a few seconds every, uh, every, at every uh, point in the world. So right now, for example, I will be able to report this scan just from my iPad, and this will be something impossible just a few uh, years ago. So uh, we can have very specific techniques that may be uh, reported by those people who have uh, more expertise, no matter where they are in the world. And uh, as I said, we are in front of a, of a bunch of different imaging techniques, and we will need to select those images techniques that are uh, better for every purpose, or every tumor, or every patient, depending on what we are looking for. 
And what about if I tell you that uh, we could give information about if a patient is responding or not uh, at a much earlier stage as we are doing now? So this is the situation currently. We have a patient who may have a tumor. We give a therapy to the patient and we cause some changes in the tumor. But it won't be until a few months that the tumor will uh, actually reduce in size. So this is what we are assessing currently. So what about if we apply a functional or a molecular imaging technique just a few days after you have started treatment and we can tell you if the patient is responding or not. So saving a lot of time, money, and more importantly, toxicity to a, to a patient that is not benefiting. And how are we gonna measure these new tools? So we have developed new softwares and we are working on that. So currently, uh, we give you information basically about the axial plane of the tumor, but we can now give information about the total volume of the tumor. And not only about a single lesion, we published this paper last year in which we assess the total volume of bone metastasis in the axial skeleton. And not only that, we can assess changes in that volume of bone metastasis after a few weeks of treatment. And we can also give you measurable information like the apparent diffusion coefficient, which uh, informs on tumor cellularity, and we can analyze uh, those histograms, how they change. And I, I have shown you uh, how many uh, new uh, parameters uh, we can get from images. Uh, so it's not only about the size. We can give you information about the shape, the vasculature. We can do texture analysis. And all these parameters can be correlated with histological and molecular and genomic parameters. So at some point, I think sooner rather than later, we will get into a situation in which the scans will be coming to what I will call virtual biopsies. And we may be able to give us as much information as a biopsy or without the need of taking a sample, actually. And if we go one step further, uh, right now we are giving you information about the tumor as a total. But if we look at our images more carefully, uh, we could give you information about what's happening pixel by pixel, so almost cell by cell. These are the ADC maps. As I said, these give us information about cellularity and changes in cellularity. This is the baseline scan and after a few weeks of treatment. And you can see how this presacral node responded uh, differently to the bone here. And actually the bone here in this area responded differently to the bone here. So we can assess uh, interorgan and intratumoral heterogeneous response, and this is a good tool to evaluate tumor evolution. So again, lots of information, and uh, we are in the age of the omics. You have all uh, heard about genomics, proteomics, metabolomics, and we need to be there we need to invest in radiomics groups that get the most from our scans and get all this information and integrate it with the other omics. So just to end this talk, I will like you to uh, take just one message home. I'm not very ambitious here, just one message. We already have lots of prognostic, predictive, and response imaging biomarkers. We need to work further in order to uh, develop and validate further imaging biomarkers. But more importantly, I think that we need to know uh, which is going to be the best biomarker for every patient, for every tumor, in order to uh, give you, to offer you uh, precision imaging biomarkers for precision uh, medicine. So thank you very much for your attention.